641, welcome back. The Senate Environment Committee is conducting hearings into the use of dispersants at the Deepwater Horizon site this morning. And there are other developments in Congress regarding this bill and restoring the coast. And joining us now to talk about it all, Ann Reams with the Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation. Ann, thanks for coming in bright and early this morning. That's we right. really appreciate it. Sure thing. Uh, what is uh, your take on, on uh, what the effects of these uh, dispersants have been and what they might be long term? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, EPA just came out with their second round of testing, and we've scrutinized their data. And basically what they're saying is that the um, Corexit is less toxic than the oil. The combination of oil and the uh, Corexit is about the same as oil itself. So what, essentially what that means is that they're saying in a lab with acute toxicity testing, that the Corexit is not as toxic as the oil. And so what we're saying is that that's a, that's a lab test. What we're more concerned about is a long-term impact in the reality in the Gulf and the more chronic impacts that, that uh, this combination may have. All right, L less toxic than the oil. Yes. Um, but they are adding thousands of gallons of this stuff to the mm -hmm. water. Well, they did a ratio of one to 10 they, they try to mimic, and you're supposed to do that in the lab, of you know what's out there. But the reality test will be really our concern is the long-term impact on the organisms, especially the larvae, over the years to come. So you have to know it out there. Do, do you think it was better to, to add it, or would it have been better just to let the oil float to the surface and, and yeah. be skimmed? You know, it, it's a trade-off, and we knew it was a trade-off. EPA talked about the trade-off a lot. You either had the oil in the water column or you had it in the marsh. And if there's no marsh, there's no place for the critters to live. So it, it is an environmental trade-off. Um, it obviously worked. It did disperse the oil there. Um, you know, so that kind of a trade-off is something that you know, we really need to know more about for the future and not use the Gulf as a test lab anymore. And what is your, what is your feel for, for dispersants? How effective do you think it was in keeping the oil out of the marsh? Oh, we, we know it was effective. It was definitely effective. It's just what are the long-term impacts? We've got to study that. And there needs to, frankly, be independent research done by us, by uh, universities. And I mean independent. And it needs to be funded. This is critical for long-term. It really is. Fox 8 did a report this week that found some oil beneath the sandy surface of uh, one of the barrier islands. Are you getting similar reports from any other areas? Uh, how big of a concern is this? Well, we know that uh, some of the oil, obviously, the bird's foot delta keeps getting a little, you know, oil waves. But um, we in the Pontchartrain Basin have been really fortunate. We have not seen any oil since that the one little blip over Fourth of July with the tar balls. So um, we're hopeful. You know, but you don't know what's going to, you know, if storms are going to move this oil around or what. What do you hope comes out of these Senate hearings today? Oh, I, I hope really that they say we're not going to use any water body as a test anymore. We're going to put everything we've got into this response to an oil spill once and for all and put their money where their mouth is. All right. Ann Reams with the Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it.